Hello, and welcome back for the Art Camp 3 Week 8 Critique. Um, so this week we are dealing with weather and climate and geomorphology, uh, one of my favorite words ever. Um, so uh, this is a good week because it tends to push people outside of their comfort zones. Uh, most of the time when we're painting landscapes, especially when we're just starting out, we have sort of a set few landscapes that we're more comfortable painting. Uh, for some people, that's going to be jungle scenes. For others, it's going to be, you know, the typical plains and mountains sort of thing. Uh, it depends on kind of where you're from and what you're used to seeing. But you're going to have sort of a comfort zone. And the kind of idea of this is that this is going to push you out of that comfort zone and is going to teach you how to do other stuff that you wouldn't normally do. Uh, like snowy scenes, for instance, or desert scenes, or whatever else. Um, so by playing around with the different weather uh, conditions as well as climates, uh, we get to kind of expand our range of possibilities uh, so that when we get into those final weeks uh, of creating our finished pieces, uh, we have more possibilities and we're not uh, restricted to just a few subject matters. Uh, this also helps when you're coming up with ideas and brainstorming and thumbnailing, because if you are used to painting one sort of landscape, uh, you're going to have one sort of shape language and one sort of design methodology uh, that's going to kind of limit you in what you're, uh, what you tend to do. Uh, for instance, if you look at Western painters, for instance, uh, they're going to be used to painting Western scenes, and therefore are going to be used to using those sort of shape languages, those sort of compositional tools to best express that. Uh, but if you suddenly give them a scene that they're not used to, uh, a different sort of landscape, uh, they might struggle a little bit with uh, using the different um, tools that you might have from a different climate. Um, so all that to say, this is good stuff to do. And uh, uh, I'll go ahead and do some paint overs of everybody's stuff. And uh, we'll go from there. Right. So, uh, as always, um, if you've got questions, go ahead and let me have them. Uh, I'll be watching the chat as best as possible, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, any questions you guys might have. All right. So, just diving straight in here, these look really nice. Uh, this is uh, off to a great start. Um, there's a nice variety here, um, lots of different nice stuff happening. Really like what you're doing with the colors. Uh, I think they're working quite well. Um, yeah, I think overall I really, really like what you're doing there. Um, let's see here. I'm not going to have honestly too much to say because I think, uh, I think you are doing a good job of what I'm talking about here. Um, uh, I think something in general that I'd like to suggest is a little bit more attention paid to, to getting a little more depth in your work. Uh, I feel like the, the sort of middle distance to distant background is sort of suffering in your sketches here. Um, I feel like um, both here um, as well as up here, uh, the depth doesn't feel quite as strong as I think it could. Um, and whether that's a problem of color or design or shape or something, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Go ahead and play with it just a little bit uh, to see what I can what I can do for you here. I have a feeling you both uh, kind of need more contrast and less contrast. Uh, snow is one of those funny ones that uh, stays bright even as uh, it gets more distant. Uh, snow doesn't really make sense with atmospheric perspective. Um, I don't know why there's something to do with the light waves of white light. I don't know. Um, I'm not a scientist. So, but I think actually um, pumping up some of the contrast back here will help to draw our eye back here, uh, which I think will help give a bit more depth 
than what you've got right now. I'd actually like to see, in this case, uh, a bit more contrast. Over the contrast of kind of everything else, uh, the tree trunks and all that, you can keep those pretty subdued. Uh, but by letting that uh, the white of the snow pop out, um, I think that'll help a fair bit. It's a fairly little thing, but I think will help a fair bit. It seems like when you're doing your sketches, you're sort of leaving out that um, layering effect to get a, more depth in there. Uh, you're doing a good job of focusing on some nice stuff happening in the foreground, uh, but I feel like that's not exactly happening as much um, as you get into your background areas. Overall, your colors are looking quite good. Uh, I like what you're doing. Um, you've got some nice bounce light stuff going on, a uh, nice variety of colors in your whites, which is always nice to see. Um, nice variety of colors overall. Um, overall, really just fairly good forms. Um, with your snow, I'd like to see some more depth on it. Uh, I think it's important to remember that, um, especially with this much snow, uh, this is kind of a three-dimensional layer. Uh, snow, has, snow has some depth to it, and when it gets this um, coating of the environment, uh, you're actually going to see a little bit of roundness to it. Um, think about that layering of kind of a thick, uh, blanket of snow on everything. Uh, they're actually going to have even a bit of shadow on them uh, oftentimes. So maybe take a look at some reference and see if you can find some uh, examples of that so that you can make sure to get that that feeling of um, the fact that it's, it's not just a, a um, super thin coat of snow, but actually something that is providing some roundness to uh, your forms and uh, causing them to uh, simplify a bit more. Um, so it depends on the, obviously, the quantity of snow. But for a scene like what you're depicting here, um, I think you could uh, I think you could do with a bit more uh, dimensionality there. Um, I also wouldn't mind seeing perhaps a bit more saturation in your shadows. Uh, you've got kind of a teal sky going on back here, which I like. Uh, but I do want to see a few more areas where you punch up that uh, contrast and have some more saturation in those shadows. Uh, I feel like sometimes your work can err on the side of a little undersaturated and maybe just a couple more areas of, of pump, punching up the saturation. Uh, but overall, really nice, uh, super strong values. Uh, yeah, overall, really nice. All right. Well, these are great. Um, really nice stuff. Uh, really nice variety. Um, one thing I'd like to see right off the bat is when you're dealing with the uh, rain effect, one of the things that rain does is it hyper amplifies the sense of atmospheric perspective. Uh, and it kind of makes sense because think about how you're looking through air and that's what's causing atmospheric perspective to happen. Uh, with rain and also snow, you're looking through layers of rain and layers of snow, uh, which are further obscuring stuff in the background. Um, so uh, I try to maybe push that even more, uh, let that really, really fade back. And you can see it in the reference you've got. Uh, that in both of these, the examples show that uh, in that distant landscape, uh, the contrast goes really far down. Um, and you can get away with um, very, 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 very subtle landscapes um, when you have active snow falling. Same <clears throat> uh, goes for rain. It's also, <coughs> excuse me, um, gives you a chance to actually kick up the contrast a bit in your foregrounds to further accentuate that effect. Um, don't be afraid to get pretty dark and contrasty with a foreground. 
um, to further show that um, things are getting really faded out and low contrast in the backgrounds. Just a thought there. Uh, I do want to say that I really like what's happening uh, with this one here. Um, I think there's a lot of really strong stuff happening here. Uh, your colors, I think, are really good. Uh, I like the subtlety of the values. Um, I love how subtle and subdued all of your shadows are. Um, I think as far as scale goes, I'm not sure if it's reading uh, how you want it to read. Uh, right now, I'm a little confused by whether you want this to be a really large landscape or actually a really small landscape. Um, because obviously based on your reference here of using this big cloud front, you'd want this to be kind of big giant mountains um, based on the scale of this thing coming in. Uh, I feel like this would be much larger. Whereas here it kind of feels diminutive in that I can kind of see a person being uh, this tall. Uh, without much difficulty. So I'm a little confused on that. Um, part of it would come down to a, a matter of perspective of where exactly do you want that horizon line to be. Uh, if you are trying to have it be this low, uh, I'd try to emphasize that in those few areas where you can. Uh, that is to say, maybe like down here where it's where the different forms are meeting, uh, you could play up that um, sense of depth by really, really pushing those planes back there. And then also thinking having this come down like that to further accentuate the perspective. And yes, there are times when that's not going to apply uh, because obviously the more distant mountains in this case could have been taller than the ones behind it. But uh, you kind of want to use the tricks to accentuate the depth more so than anything in this case, uh, even if it might not necessarily be the case. Yeah, I take another look at the perspective of this. I also think that this could probably scale down faster than uh, out to be. You probably play up this effect of the sky back here, uh, where you do have this dark sky. Uh, I know I've harped on everyone a million times about uh, how skies should be bright and all that. But this is one of those weird occasions where you want to make sure it's obvious that um, you can tell this is a, a really dark, ominous, stormy sky. Oh, some of the whites might be nice too. Maybe even bringing in some of the warmth. Even though it's not really in the photo, you've you've sort of painted a fairly warm light on the landscape. Actually, some warmth in the clouds up there might be nice. And I also think uh, I do like the subtlety, but I feel like it just needs a bit more uh, dark areas. It doesn't have to be much. Uh, honestly, just a few foreground rocks that are maybe a touch darker than the rest, uh, just to extend the value range a little bit. It doesn't need too much. Uh, I kind of prefer if most of it stayed in this subtle value range. I think it's working really well, but just a little bit here in the foreground. 
show that you're, you, you are using that full value range. Um, so yeah, take a look at the uh, perspective and make sure that you're getting the scale of what you want correct. Um, it kind of depends on what you're after, how you change things. Uh, but make sure that's really obvious for us. Uh, in a landscape where you don't have much to go on, uh, that is, you don't have, for instance, trees to clearly show us uh, the scale of things, you have to use tricks of perspective and showing things diminishing as they get further away and uh, some other tricks like that, some overlap, um, some close foreground stuff that we can recognize uh, so that all that can combine to tell us a lot about the scale of the environment uh, that we're looking at. Um, so yeah, uh, but overall looking, looking really nice. Uh, these are, these are very strong sketches. Right. Need some great colors again. Um, really like what you're doing here. Uh, love this, uh, snowy one over here. I think this is working fantastic. Uh, I love all the variety you've got going on in there. Uh, I think it's a bit stronger than the other one. Um, but not by too much. Um, it's just the slightly stronger one. I would like to see um, a bit more, um, let's say, variety, uh, but a few more areas of focal point. Um, I also, I'm just going to go ahead and take it out that I just don't like the, the little border thing. I don't think the piece needs it. In fact, I think it would be a lot stronger without it. I know it's like instinct to put it there, but I feel like you don't really need it there as much as you think you do. OK with this little foreground one, um, but I feel like going the entire way up uh, isn't really necessary. And you can still get some of the effect of that by having some really tall um, border stuff going on here. Uh, that sort of opening up sense uh, just by keeping this kind of dark, but I don't think you actually need to go fully having a border there. Um, but by uh, by having other focal points, I mean that um, I feel like even putting some bright highlights back here give the eye something else to look at. Uh, it's very easy for us to fall in the trap of having kind of a one note song where we have a focal point and we make it super obvious that it's the focal point and that's kind of the only thing we want to look at uh, but as we start to develop uh, especially as we start to move towards the finished work that we're doing uh, we want to start thinking that uh, you want those several focal points you want those several areas uh, that you're going to get the viewer to look at and uh, extending the um, extending the possibilities for what we're doing By, by bringing, introducing a few, few extra areas of bright contrast, a bright color, it might help a little bit. As usual, it's it's all about kind of putting dark against light, light against dark, and spreading out our focus a little bit. Because once you've got that first focal point nailed. Uh, then we can start thinking about the second and third focal points and how we want to work those in and what we're going to do with those and all the all the possibilities we've got. Even if you've got a dark foreground here, I think you could do with having, having some more colors, uh, some color variety in there. It's nice to see. And uh, 
also, you know, it's not obviously the focus of what we're talking about this week, but um, do be careful with your uh, perspective and making sure that's uh, as solid as possible. Uh, right now, there's some little bit of wonkiness going on here and there uh, that just as we go towards final, uh, make sure you really get all of your forms super solid and uh, make sure you've got that sense of perspective uh, nailed really tight. But obviously something that becomes more important uh, as we get closer and closer to uh, the finishing stages. Um, yeah, um, but overall really, really nicely done. Um, super strong colors and a uh, nice sense of lighting too. Um, the other piece I think actually could just kind of use with some of the same stuff I was talking about there with multiple focal points. Uh, I just think uh, a little more uh, spreading of those, of those areas of light could actually benefit it. Because um, right now, based on the composition, it's pretty hard for this not to be your focal point, um, which lets you uh, be a little bit more bold with uh, introducing some more contrast uh, in some more areas. Don't be afraid to do that when uh, when it becomes quite obvious what your focal point is. Uh, don't don't be too afraid to explore some other ones. Um, so yeah, looking looking really nice. All right. So they're good. Um, yeah, even at uh, this stage, they do have a pretty strong sense of uh, of the different uh, climates and the different lighting effects that those cause. Uh, I'd say that uh, the snowy one's a little bit stronger right now, um, and that mostly has to do with the kind of distant mountain we've got going on here. In that, I think this would actually um, come together a bit more. Uh, it's always kind of instinct to see too many colors and see too much contrast in distant mountains, uh, when in fact they rarely have um, the sort of uh, contrast that we start to see. Really, you can say a whole lot with a very, very tight um, color and value range. Kind of pushing the distance here. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of what you're running into here is trying to trying to do too much back here. Um, a lot of depth is sort of playing up the restraint of doing very little, um, very little contrast, uh, not over exaggerating forms, and being very subtle with everything. Um, you've got a decent variety of greens going on in here, but I feel like uh, your shadow tones uh, are going to tend to be a bit uh, more blue. So when you've got yellow grass like this, rather than going towards those warm colors, you're probably going to end up going more towards the, the cooler end of the spectrum, uh, sometimes uh, with a bit of gray. <clears throat> uh, just think about what it's going to be when it's illuminated by that sky color you've got. Uh, you've got a cool sky color, so uh, you're going to have the cool shadows typically. So if you've got a tree like this, you're going to kind of have a round shadow cast on it, uh, not just the branches. All that's a lot easier, um, obviously, when you've got really good reference that shows you that stuff.
I feel like the water has gotten quite a bit too purple. Uh, if anything, you want to go towards a little bit blues, because you've got kind of blues up here in your sky, but just a bit darker than that. And again, I think uh, a bit too much contrast for the amount of distance you're trying to show here. So really, a lot of what I'm doing here is, is thinking about the values again. Um, I'm less concerned with what things are and a lot more concerned with what are the values uh, doing. Believe it or not, the values are actually going to show a lot of what you're trying to show here. That would actually probably be a good exercise is trying to show different um, other conditions just in grayscale to emphasize that um, the value ranges you're using uh, actually dictate a lot of how we interpret the scene. Okay. So just a quick thing there, just to sort of push back a lot of what you did to emphasize that depth going back. Uh, so reducing some of the contrast, reducing some of the details, um, flattening things out so that the drawing is not um, over-exaggerated back there. This is sort of the area that people tend to uh, get confused about. They bring it a little bit close to the foreground uh, by having things sort of tilted up towards us and don't let that um, sort of range of really distant, really horizontal forms uh, come into play. Uh, so just an area to watch out for. Uh, you can get away with, a lot, obviously, a lot more contrast in a scene like this because um, you've got the uh, snow providing such bright whites, uh, meaning that uh, you can go uh, pretty contrasty between that and the trees. So yeah, uh, overall looking good, though. A uh, good sense of uh, the different climates you've got. So, yeah, uh, keep it up. Right. This looks cool. Um, I like what's happening here with the, with the colors. That's working pretty well. Um, you've got a good sense of the skylight filling in here. Um, I think with this, um, I want to see some more separation of the forms. And you can do it, in, obviously, in a very low uh, value range. Um, it doesn't take uh, really introducing much new values here to uh, emphasize the forms here. You know, if you've got this as your focal point, you can use that very subtle contrast to kind of put some darks against lights and lights against darks, <clears throat> start to bring out this form. All in a very, very tight value range. Uh, I have nothing against super tight values. Uh, I think they can work very well. But those same lessons apply whether you're dealing with something like that or whether you're dealing with you know, super dark against super light. Um, it doesn't matter. The, the same lessons sort of apply just on a much tighter value range. When you're dealing with snow, uh, it's a perfect opportunity to play with tons of colors. You can get away with so much color variety in snowy scenes. Uh, they pick up all sorts of crazy colors, and you can get away with anything. So try to avoid just kind of going gray-blue uh, when you can. Uh, you've started to have some variety in there, but I think you can even push that more, even stronger. Uh, same goes for some of your bounce light in here. I feel like that can get even uh, warmer and more intense.
So this other one, uh, actually some of the same stuff applies that there's a bit of a confusion between the uh, sky color and this. Uh, when you start to look at it in grayscale, it, it gets a little bit confused which way you're going with that. And you can actually go either way. I know I often tell people that the skies are bright, uh, but this is a case where you could kind of break that rule and go for a really light building um, and a really uh, dark sky. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Something you have to super, super commit to um, and uh, make very obvious. Also, when you've got what appears to be kind of late afternoon light, um, there's sort of a gradient that happens as it gets darker. Uh, it will go from sort of yellow to orange to red as the, as the light falls off. So make sure you get some of that red color um, Showing that kind of fall off there. We want to see that that little bit of hue uh, variation as it gets darker. It's also going to let you be able to push the contrast and brightness. It does get bright. I want to see sounds light coming in there. And I almost want to see light pushed a bit. It is catching a lot of skylight, I think. I think it works fine if it does. bit like that. Um, so yeah, uh, just paying a little bit more attention to some of your edges, making sure that things are reading, making sure you're using a little contrast uh, to help, and then a bit more attention paid to getting some of the color variety in there. Uh, that's something you'll probably pick up both from doing some uh, looking at more reference, uh, as well as actually looking at reference of some masters and how they handle things and some of the colors they might sneak in there that don't always obviously show up uh, when you do look at the photo reference uh, but overall looking looking nice yeah it's these look good um i really like what you're doing here um I think uh, especially what you're doing here in the back uh, with these nice subtle warms and cools and nice subtle contrast and really tight value range. This stuff is, is super cool to see. I feel like uh, it's really close to being spot on. I think there's just a few things that are, that are a little bit off. I actually think the C could be lightened a bit uh, further away. Push that reflection effect you're going to get from this where it is darker here. And then I feel like the, the foreground has gotten too light. This is a case where you'd actually want to knock down that contrast. This is also something that you really want to take a look at the perspective, particularly as you go further on with this and realize that you're going to have some super crazy perspective with this wall and any indications you can add in here of that, you know, crazy, crazy depth, uh, it's going to help to make this thing read a bit better. So with natural rocks like this, you have to kind of play up certain forms and certain edges and uh, exaggerate some of the overlap so that you um, get to show off that perspective. Because obviously, if you're, if you're painting a building, it's pretty easy to follow perspective because you have to. Uh, but as you get into rocks and stuff, people forget about that. So as you were to push this a little bit further, uh, I'd encourage you to really, really pay a ton of attention to that and making sure that that works well. Um, 
I also wonder if we actually might take out this little bit of lava going on here. I like that one's distracting, um, but actually play up a bit more over here. Uh, that might just be personal taste there, but uh, I just feel compositionally it felt a little bit odd there. I don't know why that is. Uh, I often can't explain why certain compositional things don't work or don't work, uh, but I just try to pay attention to that as much as possible. Also be careful getting too white with this. Keep in mind that you know, if this stuff is in the shadow, for instance, uh, it's still just going to be white in the shadow. So it's actually going to you know, take on that blue color uh, and not be quite as high contrast as maybe you have it, uh, unless those rocks, for instance, right next to it uh, are actually in the light. Just a little something to think about. Uh, I think this one stands out to me as the strongest of them, uh, just because I find it fairly interesting uh, and different from what a lot of people um, uh, would tend to do for something like this. So I think it, I think it works quite well. Uh, this one's working decently well also. Um, I figure out exactly what it is. It could be that uh, your colors feel a little too isolated right now. Uh, like I think some of the yellows and greens should I think it's spread out a bit more, uh, even bring in those greens into this foreground area. And have, make sure there's some sort of interplay between the warmth you've got here and the sky. Uh, it feels like the sky is a bit too isolated from what's happening um, on the ground. A, a little bit more warm and cool spread throughout. Colors are a little too isolated right now. Again, perspective, perspective. Really play up this perspective. Really think about how big that form is and how you can show that off if possible. <clears throat> also a chance to maybe have those rocks go, this pile of rocks kind of go up um, below and above the horizon line to further play that up. So that the ones up here, you're really just like barely seeing the top of emphasizing that, uh, that difference, and then have some below uh, that we're really seeing a lot of the top of. That's one of those little tricks you can throw in there to uh, emphasize the perspective when you don't always get to obviously see it. Of course, looking back at this one, same sort of thing. You want to play up the perspective. So you actually want to uh, de-emphasize how much of the tops of uh, this form back here you're seeing. You can obviously have some that are sort of tilted towards us a little bit, and you get to see some of it. But uh, keep in mind you're looking up at it, and you actually want to hide a lot of what you're uh, what you're doing up there. And that'll help to bring in uh, some of that scale that I think you're trying to get in this piece. Yeah, um, but yeah, that one's also looking quite good. Um, yeah, overall, uh, really strong stuff. Um, uh, oh, question here. Uh, do you feel I need something on the right side to balance the composition? Felt good to me, so I left it, but I spent some time wondering about that. Um, I don't think it does, personally. Uh, compositionally, I think this works f 
fine. Um, uh, there are, of course, some things you could do to it that I might consider. Uh, you know, it kind of depends on what the piece is all about. If you want to emphasize this, uh, I might bring it into the composition a bit more, uh, which means that maybe you want to add a bit more to the bottom, uh, and maybe you even want to add a bit more uh, over here to the left, uh, just because it fe can feel a little bit more comfortable uh, to bring focal points a little in away from the edge. Uh, that doesn't mean you always have to do that, but it's something to think about. Uh, as far as balancing things out, uh, you certainly could balance it out with, you know, some more dramatic clouds up here uh, to emphasize uh, some of that uh, and to bring about a bit of balance. Right. Up to you. Uh, there's a lot of options of things you can do here. Uh, you can add some, you know, crazy mountains back in here. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, so it's it's really up to you. Um, I think this composition works fine as it is, but uh, if this is something that you'd like to take towards finish, uh, I might play at least with doing some different stuff and see what works, what you like better. Um, typically, if I find that I'm thinking about changing a composition, uh, it means that it's at least worth trying out some other ideas and seeing how I feel about them. Because uh, really, that's the only way you're going to know how it's going to work. Um, composition isn't something you can usually think your way through and think your way to a solution. Uh, composition is something you have to kind of trial and error your way into uh, a solution. So the more you uh, kind of experiment with it, play around with it, you know, throw it into a different file, stretch it out, uh, do whatever you need to do uh, to try out some different stuff. Um, that's what that's what it'll take. But uh, yeah, I think you're uh, you're definitely on the right track here, and these are uh, these are some really good sketches. All right, good. Nice. Yeah, these look really good. Um, gotta admit, I really like this. Uh, you got here. Uh, it's, um, something nice about the edges and stuff. I feel like that's that's actually a lot of what's missing in the in the translation uh, as you took it into your own. Is there's a nice crispness to the um, the reference that I really want to see in here. And I think if you had it in there, uh, that this one would actually be a very very successful one. So I think there's both a bit more contrast and a bit sharper edges in a few areas. That is what makes uh, makes the reference so strong and uh, notable. And I just want to see that pumped up a little bit. There's a nice variety to the colors you've got going on in here. Um, I think for, for a very interesting piece. Uh, anytime you do have some extreme foregrounds, it's good to find a way to relate that, um, whether you can have some sort of mid-ground forms uh, to connect those. Uh, that might be a good idea. It's easy that a foreground can feel just cut out from what's behind it, and uh, you want to make sure that you're not uh, Yeah, I actually think the, the colors of this one are working pretty well. It was just some of the drawing that I think needed to be tightened up to prove that this is actually a fairly good, um, fairly good start to a sketch. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, I think it works pretty well. Uh, there are some compositional things that you know. I think I'd like to see some more layering here. Uh, I'd like to see uh, just a bit more, you know, different forms down here to break up the monotony. Some little things, uh, not much. But if you were to take this to finish, 
Uh, I'd like to see that. Um, at least something to think about. Um, I also really like uh, this. I think this is super strong. Um, you've, got the, you've got the really good strong drama of all that stuff going on. Uh, some really nice colors going on. Uh, I think it works quite well. Um, I might like to see you kind of work back in at this point um, to kind of redefine things and uh, sharpen up some of your drawing. And something I really like about the reference is are these little uh, red rim light effects going on on the rock. And that's something I'd like to see kind of hand drawn in there uh, to sort of show that effect. Um, I don't know whether you want to you know, completely fake the lighting or not like this, uh, but you could sort of have some rim light stuff happening like that, uh, or you know, just having it on some of the ground planes reflecting the, the sky behind it. I'm not sure how you want to go with it, but um, to think about. But yeah, I'd say to kind of work back in uh, with some more opaque brushes after doing some of the atmospheric stuff. Uh, and just redefine things, redefine some of the shadows, um, work back into the drawing a little bit. Uh, just, to, just to push it a bit further uh, to kind of prove the, prove the lighting concept here um, before you uh, consider taking it to finish. But overall, I think uh, that's fairly strong. Also, the, the contrast of the clouds a little bit. Uh, when you're dealing with sunsets, you want to be careful with where you're placing those contrasts so that they can they can all kind of lead you toward what you're trying to show. Um, odds are, for instance, the you know top right corner of this piece isn't that interesting. It's not your focal point. It's not what you're trying to show off. And so you don't want to make sure that you're not overemphasizing it. Um, but for instance, if if this peak right here uh, is something you want to emphasize. You know, maybe you sneak a little bit of red light uh, behind it, so that even subtly you're you're playing up those contrasts and uh, get uh, more interesting for us to look at. But uh, yeah, overall, really uh, really nice stuff. Um, I think these are all sort of on the right track, uh, and just can use that little bit of tweaking, that last little bit of refinement. Um, to make them even more uh, even more successful. Right. Look good. Um, I think, yeah, these are all working pretty well. I actually think the thing that I'm going to tell you is that your colors are fairly good. I think your colors are working pretty well, but I think it's your values uh, that are letting you down here. Uh, I really like, for instance, what you're doing here, um, but I feel like value-wise, not it's not as strong as it should be. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I feel like, and if we kind of zoom out, do the super tiny thing. Uh, it's just not that interesting. I, there's not much that actually reads anymore uh, as soon as we go into grayscale like this. Like I can see a tree. I can see a little bit of a tree trunk there. But beyond that, I just get a little bit lost with your values. Um, same sort of goes for the other ones too, where it just sort of, aside from that tree silhouette, most of your values are kind of getting lost in there. And you're trying to show um, quite a lot in this area here, um, but I don't think it's it's reading quite as well as as you want it to. Um, I'm trying to punch up some of your values here. As much as colors are important, 
it's mostly uh, values that are going to make an image read or not read. Uh, make things as clear as possible. I'm not actually interested in changing much of your colors. Uh, I think your colors are actually quite cool here. Um, you've got some nice uh, evening light colors uh, that I think are working really well. Uh, we're interested in just making sure that things are a bit clearer than they were. Now, if you've got that distant snow there, uh, don't be afraid to punch that up. The snow-capped mountains back here, uh, again, those are that weird rule-breaking mountains that uh, tend to pick up a lot of color and communicate it over vast distances and still stay really contrasty. So this will actually kind of help your entire background here to read a bit better. It'll give our eyes something to kind of pick up on back there and uh, extend the overall value range uh, of your whole piece here. Some brights to latch onto. It uh, also gives us kind of an excuse to bring a couple brights into this foreground uh, in, in the way of reflections. So if you've got you know flowing water like this, it's another kind of perfect opportunity to pick up some lights uh, where it's you know, not just uh, not just picking up the color of the light that's hitting it, but also reflecting it and adding in some speculars and stuff of its own. Uh, you want to go overboard with it, obviously. Uh, you want to keep some some level of that subtlety. Make sure I'm not getting too lost here. Just make sure that our values are sort of showing off that separation of the, the water and the, uh, the rocks here. Really, no matter what, um, you're going to be able to read the image by values alone uh, without worrying about color, without worrying about lighting, anything else. I want the whole image to be understood uh, before I even worry about um, anything besides values. Time you look at a landscape painting and you notice like, oh wow, that looks really cool and I can I get it immediately and it's really punchy and it feels super solid. It's probably because the values are really, really strong.
think your shadows were lending a little close towards purples. There's nothing wrong with purple, um, but I often find that the shadows can get a little bit dull if they're too purple and they want to have a, a bit of blue sort of introduced into them. Right, so I don't want to go too much further with it than that, um, but I hope that uh, sort of shows what I'm talking about of getting back to values and making sure that things are contrasty enough and that your different layers are working um, even more so than your colors, because uh, I think your colors overall in, in each of these are actually quite good. And for the most part, your forms are fairly good too. Um, I think at this point, it's it's thinking about those values and making sure that those values are really, really punchy so that when we go to grayscale, you can immediately tell uh, which of these pops and uh, reads super well. Uh, you know, there's a few areas I think I could have, you know, punched up even more. Uh, like that foreground, I don't think reads quite as well as I want it to, uh, but it's starting to get there and uh, starting to go in the right direction. Uh, and is the thing that I think uh, would be good for you to focus on uh, as we keep developing these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, for the question, uh, for the finished pieces, do we need to pick something that we've submitted so far, or can we start a new one? I'm worried about doing a new scene since I might only find out it's uh, out its week after I submit it. Um, you're more than welcome to do a new piece uh, or of something you've already started to develop. Um, uh, the whole idea of us doing all of these weeks and weeks of sketches from imagination uh, is giving you possibilities of something you might want to finish, uh, something that sticks out to you as, oh, that looks super cool, I want to finish that. Or if you still haven't found anything, but you feel like you've learned a bunch and want to start something uh, entirely new, uh, you've also got the opportunity to do that. Um, so we've got one more week uh, for our emotion and narrative week. Uh, to kind of play with some more uh, alternate sketches, uh, to communicate some different ideas, to communicate some different narratives. Um, and then after that, we'll be getting into finishing pieces. And for each of those uh, three weeks, uh, we'll have two weeks each on those. Uh, so that should give you time to fully render out a piece, uh, bring it to a nice finish. Uh, but that also kind of gives you a little bit of extra time where you can be doing some sketches in the meantime. Uh, and think about the fact that you've got uh, three finished pieces you're going to want to get. Um, and uh, make sure that if you don't have, for instance, three sketches yet, uh, in the coming weeks, uh, you keep developing more and more ideas. You keep doing the thumbnails, you keep doing sketches uh, with the idea that uh, you're going to have to finish uh, three entirely new pieces. Right, you're looking good. Um, yeah, uh, I like what's happening uh, actually with the, the bottom one here. Um, I think this is off to a, a fairly good start. Um, I like some of the stuff you're doing with the colors. Um, I think uh, part of your problem is um, really just the, the drawing stage of things. Um, I actually don't think the, the colors are too far off. I think the colors are fairly spot on. Um, it's, a, it's obviously a very odd reference, um, but I think it works pretty well. I really like these sort of crazy blues and uh, pinks that you do get sometimes uh, when you're out west. 
very strange lighting, especially on those distant mountains. One thing I want to emphasize, though, is when you start to look at the, the foreground here, you start to realize that there's actually no illumination of these pink lights on it. And it's a much cooler tone than I think uh, you're picking up on. So I'd actually bring in some more blues. And where you've got the cool tones here, um, a presumably reflected light, you actually kind of want to warm those up and let those shadows be a bit warmer as they start to pick up some of the bounce light going on in there. So I think some of your color temperatures got off a little bit. Overall, I do think your, your drawing of some of the the environment and the rocks and stuff is, is getting a bit stronger, but I think that would be the thing to just keep on working on is keep looking at reference, keep doing studies, and uh, try to think about those simple uh, geometric forms and draw this stuff out in straight lines as much as possible. Um, uh, you, I can definitely see you doing that, uh, and I encourage you to uh, keep on doing that. Uh, you do want to be careful about too many tangents. Uh, as in all of this sort of stuff is kind of all converging on a similar point here. Uh, and you want to make sure that you've got nice, clear overlaps of, for instance, some different layers happening. So maybe, uh, you know, drawing a nice little overlap here, show some more layering uh, as we move into that background. And then making sure you give enough space. Show what you're trying to show. Same sort of goes for the other side, uh, making sure that you don't come too close to having these tangents. Uh, it's going to make things much harder to read, so maybe moving this out, actually, um, so that it's more clear and more obvious that how that overlap is working. about those simple layers, simple objects. And I'd even actually darken up a lot of your water here. Um, water has a, some funny effects when you're looking that far down at it. Um, a bit of the Fresnel effect, I believe that would be, in that if you're kind of looking down on water, it's actually going to be a lot darker than you think. And then as it gets further and further away, uh, that's when it's going to get kind of bright. And that's when you're going to get those uh, bright highlights in water. So there's almost always a sort of a gradient effect to water, where it gets much darker um, and less reflective as it gets closer to us. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully some of that made sense and uh, helps out a little bit. Um, yeah. But uh, looking good, uh, I think you're on the right track here. All right, Let's look good. Um, hmm. I think overall, I think I'm kind of feeling like the one of the bottom ones are feeling the strongest. Um, for this, I'm not feeling like the values in the upper right are are working for you well enough um, to show off the lighting. You're trying to show off, you know, extreme backlit from a sun, 
but right now your skylight is brighter than any of your direct light from the sun. Um, so this is just comes down to a value problem of you way, way, way overemphasize the light from the sky, uh, meaning that you sort of detracted from the light um, coming from the sun. So this gets back to what we were talking about with the lighting practice. Uh, I don't feel like you've got the, the backlight effect going on here because um, you want to make sure that you know these red lights uh, or at least warm um, are going to be the, the strongest sense of light um, of any of these. So uh, I don't feel like the sense of light is strong enough there to really work. Um, I think there's some interesting things happening here with um, this sort of more gray scene, but I kind of want to see it even more, even more subtle. Remove some of the little contrasts. I think some of the errant values and errant brush strokes uh, sort of detract from what I think you're trying to do here. And it's important to kind of take out some of that stuff. Make sure that you don't have a stray, you know, super dark brush strokes and stuff like that that are actually distracting from the whole scene. It can actually do more harm than it might seem uh, just by having some some incorrect values in places. Uh, I can actually throw things off more than you might think. And I think for the sense of scale, I'd like to see this this light reduced in the amount of space it takes up. Um, It, it would have more impact if it was actually a bit smaller there. Again, I think you're you're way too tentative with your foregrounds. I think this comes nearly close enough to to what you probably want here, um, meaning that the scale of the stuff in the back isn't isn't quite as strong as you want it. Yeah, so actually pushing the subtlety a bit more, um, I think, is the trick here for more impact. Um, I think by having too many little contrasts, um, you were missing out on some of the overall impact that I think this piece could have. It all goes back to those, those super simple value compositions that you want things to read really clearly. Um, and really simply. If you've got too much distracting from that, you're going to have a, a weaker piece because of it. See some actual foregrounds. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. I want to see some foregrounds that take up actual space. <coughs> excuse me. Oof. Ah, can't speak today.
Yeah, I want to see some more stuff covering up your backgrounds. <clears throat> I want to see some more interesting layering happening. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to do with what we're talking about this week, but just I want to see you keep trying to push that. Um, I see those foregrounds really happen. Um, I don't want to see just cool background and then kind of squeeze in a little bit of foreground here in the foreground. Um, I want to see some prominent foregrounds. Uh, it's going to make your background so much stronger, uh, I promise you. Um, will definitely happen. So yeah, uh, overall looking good though. Um, I think there's some, there's some good possibilities here. These look good. Um, yeah, this looks good. Um, I think this top one here obviously is working quite well. Um, it's a fair bit like the what we saw last week. Um, so I guess I want to talk a little bit more about this one. Um, I feel like this one needs a bit more love when it comes to the values. Um, cause I feel like your values have sort of escaped you a little bit in trying to focus on the colors and, and making that stuff work. Um, yeah, I feel like the, the thing to do now is to kind of work back into something like this and re-clarify those edges and make sure that, uh, your simple value shapes, uh, are working again. Actually like a lot of what's happening here. Um, a lot of it's working fairly well. Her blues might be a little bit too blue. Um, yeah, I kind of want to see those grayed out just a little bit, or maybe shift it a bit towards more blue blue and less cyan blue. Uh, they just feel ever so slightly off to me. Um, and then I actually want to see maybe some more blues and purples in your shadows. Doesn't mean you have to go like crazy saturated, um, but even like subtly blue and subtly purple colors uh, in those shadows um, help to provide some, some interest to them. Because uh, part of my problem with this was that it was starting to feel too grayed out. Uh, and didn't have the color variety that I think was working up here. Because even though this is really gray, uh, there's a lot of colors happening in there when you start to look at it. Um, and it doesn't take much before you start to get that effect. Uh, just involves putting a few, few purple tones here, a few blue tones here, um, and all of a sudden it's much uh, more intense. Um, has a much stronger overall feel to it. Yeah, I also wonder about some of the greens back here in the background. Uh, I feel like the fact that those greens are, are so green and there's none of that in the foreground, uh, it might be distracting a bit. So maybe bring in some of those greens into this foreground uh, or shift some of the background greens um, to be a bit more in this sort of warm color tone uh, that you've got going on here.
yeah, uh, a bit more something like that, I think. So just tighten things up a little bit, neaten them up, uh, make sure your values are spot on, uh, that they're not getting too mushy uh, or unclear. And then uh, maybe introduce uh, some more cool colors in there so that you don't end up too much in the territory of kind of a monotone brown painting. Uh, nobody really likes brown paintings. And most of that effect comes from the fact that you uh, you need some more cool colors in there to balance things out. Uh, I often find that paintings that have too much of the just strictly warm tones uh, can feel a little bit dead. Uh, even if you perhaps have something subtly purple in there, uh, it can still lend itself to looking a little too muddy and brown. So uh, just a thought on that. But uh, yeah, looking good. Right. It's look good. Um, I think I think for you, what I would emphasize is kind of what we actually started out today talking about is that um, scenes like this where you've got either cloudy scenes uh, or rainy scenes have a lot of subtlety in them. Um, and they work because of just how subtle they are. You actually want to you want to do the same stuff you're doing, but with way less values. Um, let those value contrast be really subtle. So I'm going to just paint out all of your contrast here, uh, and this piece is going to work way better because what you're doing is about right. Uh, you've got you know forms that are nicely painted. You've got some perspective that's happening there. Um, you've just painted way too much. So this is probably my most common thing I do for paint overs is I remove people's detail that they paint um, and I remove all the contrast because most of the problem I think you're running into here is that you've introduced way more contrast than I think you need. You can already start to see that this is holding together much better, uh, having much more depth in here. Um, actually introduce a bit more contrast for instance back here uh, want to so then once you've got sort of this established um, value range now you can kind of go back in here and add a bit more contrast to the things that you want to emphasize. Uh, so maybe you do want to kick up the contrast uh, a little bit here. Uh, maybe you want to play up that edge a bit more. You do want, uh, for instance, a little, little light poking through the clouds and illuminating some of this. Once you've got that subtlety, it gives you the range to play with uh, where exactly you want that contrast to be. Yeah, I think you were, uh, you definitely headed in the right direction with it. Um, you just needed to take that extra step and, uh, and really play down the subtlety, make things really faded out, especially when you've got something like raining like this. Uh, if it's raining this much, you're going to hardly see anything back there. All that detail is going to get removed. Uh, it's going to fade to almost nothing back there go out in a rainstorm and try to look really far away, especially in a mountainous landscape like this. Uh, so many things are going to be completely blown out and faded away. And that's how you're going to get that effect of um, really strong rain and clouds. 
about that uh, as you keep developing your sketches and stuff. Don't be afraid to go really subtle with things. Um, it's something I see very often that people assume that uh, for maximum impact, they have to have maximum contrast and they have to have all these details and stuff. But oftentimes you can get away with having something read uh, extremely well in a very, very tight value range. But if you do want something to be uh, really punchy, you, know, you can throw some clouds behind it, you can throw some light behind it. Uh, there's lots of little tricks you can do to make the silhouette even stronger if it needs to be. Um, I also wonder if your foreground maybe needs to get enlarged a little bit. It feels a little bit tiny uh, for what it is. Like like you could get more scale in here. Um, bringing that foreground a bit closer to us. Really play up that depth. It's kind of a up to you choice, um, but I do think it's it's a stronger piece with more depth there. Um, so bring this foreground really close to us and let that depth be really extreme. As you uh, as you keep going with the stuff, um, just something to think about compositionally. Uh, if you do want to play with some more depth. Um, I'd also perhaps play with some more depth back here. Uh, really try to maybe play up some of these layers uh, so that you've got even more opportunity to uh, show off the kind of layering back here. So adding in some very clear silhouettes back here. Uh, you've started to do it in your thumbnail. It's just something to think about now uh, if you want to push this a little bit further. And yeah, that's, uh, that wraps us up. So another fairly short critique, but uh, hopefully that helped you guys. Um, I really like uh, all the stuff you've done this week. I think they're very strong. Uh, you've done a good job of showing off all this nice color and light and weather and climate and all that. Um, I think they've worked very, very well. And uh, I'm super excited by some of the stuff you're doing. And I think you've got some, some pieces on uh, your hands now that um, could be translated into some very, very nice uh, finished paintings in the coming weeks. So uh, thanks again for everything. Um, you guys are awesome. And uh, I think uh, I think you're on the right track. And uh, so we've got this one last week of uh, doing imaginative sketches. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of emotion and narrative pieces and uh, trying to see what we can do to push different emotions and narratives um, uh, in your sketches. So this is a fun one. Uh, it's going to be a bit challenging. Uh, it's a fairly abstract concept for a lot of people. And, uh, it's something you might take a little bit of time to get your, get your head around, but I promise it'll help a lot, uh, as we move into those last few, uh, assignments of finishing paintings, uh, cause it should give you some even more, uh, range to develop cool sketches and cool concepts. Uh, that you actually really, really want to finish. So great work again. Uh, you guys are great. And uh, I will talk to you guys next week.